Hi, it's Kim with Mom Makes Games, here to play my game Hellfire 1988 for you. I'm going to do a complete run through, so spoiler alert if you want to play the game yourself and not know all the tricks and haven't seen the story, don't watch this. Um, there is no voice acting, unfortunately. I did this on a shoestring, self-funded, so um, you'll see the character's lips moving and some facial expressions, but unfortunately no voice acting. You'll just get me today, and I am not a voice actor, so you'll just be hearing me talking it through. Um, it'll be about two hours, maybe a little less, depending on how quickly I do things, and um, I think that's about it. You'll see there's a spot on the levels where you can skip levels if you are not someone who's interested in doing adventure games, you can just bypass those and do just a visual novel. All right, here we go. Hey, what are your kids doing to the bulletin board? It's the principal, run. Oh crap, it's a dead end. Stop looking at the clock. Your time's done when I say it is. I'm gonna ask one more time. Which one of you little sneaks vandalized the bulletin board? Wasn't any of us, Mr. Wilson. Wait, this is detention? I thought this was Young Republicans Club. You punished us without any evidence. It's totally unfair. You expect me to believe that. You were all standing around laughing at it when I caught you. We just walked to school and saw it. We don't know who drew it. Sir, we wouldn't laugh at such a serious offense. Laughing isn't a crime. You had no right to punish us. It's a crime, Jennifer, and not only against our country's laws. Ask Pastor Cook if blasphemy is a joke to him. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Maybe God has bigger things to worry about than someone drawing a pentagram. Pastor Cook is a joke. All right, you wasted enough of my Saturday. Get out of here and don't get into any more trouble. God, Wilson is such a douchebag. I'm sorry he was out for blood. He really is a jerk. Don't worry about it. He can't help it. I have it on good authority that he's an actual vampire. I fucking hate him. But it's my fault. I shouldn't have drawn it. Dude, I dared you to do it. it just sucks that he snuck up on us. Just say 10 Hell Peters and we're good. He would have found some reason to give us detention. He always does. Anyways, are you two going to the party tonight at Stephanie Roberts' house? I don't know. She's kind of a preppy. Hmm. Can you get high on near beer and candy cigarettes? Why would I waste my time with a bunch of preps and jocks? No worries. The party's going to be great. I'm going to bring an ounce and everything's going to be real mellow. You're all going to come. Sure, I'll be your wingman, Rye. I think it would be criminally irresponsible to let you smoke all of that yourself. I'll be there. Maybe, Rye. I really don't think that rich kid scene... I really don't like that rich kid scene, but I'll try to swing by if you're there. Sorry, but my family and I are driving to Hillsborough tonight and won't be back until tomorrow morning. But I'll be wishing you luck, Rye. Thanks, Angela. Hey, are you guys ready for the Battle of the Band on Halloween? Hell yes, I can't wait. Are you kidding? If I practice my solo one more time, my fingers will bleed. I can't wait to play it in front of everyone on Monday. They're gonna freak. I'm ready too, I'm super stoked. Awesome, I've gotta get home to get ready for my trip, but I'll see you guys at school on Monday. It's gonna be a Halloween to remember. I gotta go too. So see you at Stephanie's party, Jen? Yep, I have to go to the stupid church thing first, but I'll see you tonight, Ryan. Have a good trip, Angela. I'll see you there if I survive whatever weird church thing my mom is bringing me to tonight. Later, Angela. Oh, I've got to listen to Pastor Cook tell me why I'm going to hell first, but I'll see you there tonight. See you later, Angela. Hey, Jennifer, how was detention? Hi, Jesse. I give it two thumbs down. How are you doing? Hi, little man. It was amazing. There was pizza and soda and a petting zoo. 
Hey Jesse, it sucked. How were your Saturday morning cartoons? Yeah, right, Jen. I mean, you're kidding, right? Well, let's just say they must have run out of pizza before I got there. Me kidding? It was glorious. Glorious, I tell you. If they treated us that good, it wouldn't be detention. I'd love some pizza. Can we order some? I'm sorry, Jesse, but that's too expensive. How about some frozen burritos instead? Welcome to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, where they order pizza each day. How about frozen burritos instead? I'd love some too, but we're too poor. Do frozen burritos sound okay? Burritos would be perfect. Thanks, Jennifer. Jen, it looks delicious. Thanks, Jesse. Hey, how did mom seem this morning? Yeah, it's better than Domino's, right? Thanks. Hey, do you remember when dad used to tell us stories? I don't really remember him that well. What was he like? He was really sweet to mom and always brought us home little gifts after work. He was always joking. No matter what happened, he would try to find a way to make it funny. He always stood up for people and he said mom saved his life. Do you think he's in heaven? Of course, he's probably there right now watching over us. Well, yeah, isn't it obvious? He's probably there right now cracking jokes with Jesus. I don't even know if there is a heaven, but I'm sure he'd be there if there was. Sometimes I worry about what it's going to be like, you know, when I... You don't need to worry about that, Jesse. It won't be for a long, long, long time. Well, that's silly. You're going to live another 200 years. You'll tell your great-great-grandkids about me. Don't worry, Jesse. I don't think it hurts. I think it's like going to sleep and finally feeling safe. Do you think dad was scared when he, you know? I don't know. He always seemed so brave to me, but maybe. I think everyone gets scared sometimes. Dad? No way. He wasn't scared of anything. Well, except car washes. Those terrified him. He always used to say there wasn't much point in being scared of what we can't change. I'm scared, Jennifer. I don't want, I don't want to disappear. Hey, little man, it's okay. Want to know a secret? I know, Jesse, but don't worry. I won't let you go anywhere. I promise. Hey, want to know a secret? Don't worry, Jesse. I'm not going to let that happen. Do you want to know a secret? Yeah, what is it? Dad used to tell me he had buried something under a swing at the old Arabia farm. If we ever really needed money, he said, to dig it up. Do you remember Indiana Jones? What if I told you there was buried treasure right here in town and I'm going to dig it up? You know how they say that the Aradia farm is haunted? Well, I know a bigger secret about it, and it's going to make us rich. Are you serious? Does mom know? She has no idea. When I heard what the doctor said last week, I knew it was time. Everything is going to be okay. What? And ruin the greatest surprise ever? No way. No way, Jose. So don't worry. I've got this. Not yet, but she will. So don't worry, Jesse. Your big sister's going to take care of you. Listen, that's mom's car. Not a word about this to her, okay? It's a surprise. Now, don't say anything about this or your GoBots will be Gorbutch, okay? Good ears. Don't tell her yet, okay? I want it to be a surprise. My lips are sealed. Thanks, Jennifer. She's going to be so happy. No problem, little man. Who would have thought that a sister might actually be good for something, huh? I'll always have your back, Jesse. Don't worry. How are you feeling, Jesse? I'm fine. I'm feeling better. Good, honey. Thanks for making dinner, Jen. I'm starving. Hey, you guys need to finish up because Joe will be here in a few minutes, okay? Sure, Mom. How is work? Starving? Did the bank not have donuts again? So, Mom, is Joey your boyfriend or what? Oh, I'm sorry, Jen. I didn't know it was any of your business, but Joey's a very nice guy. You should be happy for me. I was just wondering, Mom, but isn't he a little old for you? Oh my God, Mom, what does my spotless reputation, what about my spotless reputation? Our family will be scandalized. Is he that nice though? I mean, he's a school music teacher. Can't you find someone richer? Jen, 
Money isn't all that. I've known plenty of guys with money and it didn't make them any nicer or smarter or more decent. The best guy I ever met was your dad and he was just about the poorest kid in town. Anyways, why don't you go change? I don't think Pastor Cook's gonna like that t-shirt. This is my favorite t-shirt, Mom. Mean, mean Streak is fucking rad. Didn't Jesus say something about not judging by appearances? Who cares what Pastor Cook likes? He's so lame. That's not a nice word, Jen. What am I going to do with you? Hey, Joey's pulling up. Be nice, guys. Hey, Mom, there's a little party over at Stephanie Roberts' house tonight. May I go? Before Mr. Wright comes in, I want to ask you something. Can I go over to Stephanie Roberts' house tonight? Mom, is it all right if I go but with Ryan to Stephanie Roberts' house tonight? Stephanie Roberts? I thought you guys haven't been friends since grade school. Okay, you can go on one condition. You have to be good at church tonight. Deal? Deal. Thanks, Mom. Totally. And Mom, I'm always good at church. That thing with the nativity scene animals is so 1987. I won't embarrass you any more than usual. Thanks, Mom. Now remember, friends, this is not just a collection for your church. It's a collection to do the work of God right here in America. And I tell you, our country desperately needs your help to turn back the tide of Satan that has afflicted this great nation of ours. Men, do you remember when we had the power team here? There's nothing more manly than strengthening your church. And women, you know it is your God-given duty to support your man, but you are all also called to support your church with praise, prayer, and your pocketbooks. You might love your car. You might love your house. But I ask you, friends, do you love the Lord? Show him your generosity. Thank you. Now, friends, I have a very special and disturbing revelation to share with you tonight. Earlier this week, Geraldo Rivera broadcast a monumental expose of the vast satanic cult that is trying to take over our country. According to the experts, there are millions of these Satanists actively practicing their filthy rituals throughout America. Rituals that require a constant stream of young people that become both victims and perpetrators of their disgusting crimes. How do these devil worshippers get these children to submit to their will? Look and listen, friends, to what your children are watching and hearing every day. Heavy metal, MTV, and even popular TV shows are all filled with mind control techniques and subliminal provocations provocations towards sexual deviancy, drug use, and hatred of godly authority. But friends, these are not the most terrifying revelations I have for you tonight. No, sir. They all pale in comparison to what I will share with you momentarily. But for now, steal your hearts with prayer and your love for Jesus. What you're about to see will most assuredly shock you. I feel kind of persecuted by everybody because I'm not a bad guy. My intentions are not to harm anyone. In fact, it's directly the opposite. When people come to my concerts, I want them to have good fun and evening out. You know, and it seems to me that a lot of people judge the book by the cover more. So they write things about me where they don't even know what they're talking about, you know? Well, there are a lot of people out there, lots of people here in our studio audience who have a very different point of view. We'll get to them. Coming up next, a look into the dark soul of Satanism. Stay with us. Now I'm going to pause the video right there because I want to point out how the most evil and corrupt of these devil worshippers are also the most ready to play victim. These lying hypocrites commit crimes of tremendous evil, but then point the finger at the godly. To these soldiers of Satan, we must stand with Jesus and say, just as he did on the Mount of Temptation, get thee hence, Satan. And I will tell you, good people of Bend, my terrible news before we resume the tape. Listen closely, friends, for this is truly fearsome. The satanic cult, which Geraldo has now shown to be throughout our country, has infected this precious town of ours. That's right, right here in Bend, there is a cabal of devil-worshipping cultists who are trying to lure your sons and daughters into their fiendish diab diabolism. None of us are safe. They may be anywhere. They walk among us, neighbors, co-workers, churchgoers, even our children's playmates, lying in wait like snakes in the grass to leap up and strike us with their sinful venom. Now friends, most of these Satanists are lost forever to the devil, and we must not cast pearls before swine. But it is my most heartfelt wish that some of the young people who have been pulled in the cult's web of evil may still be saved with the help of the Lord. Pray with me, you faithful that we can pull them back from the ledge of their evil ways, deprogram the cult's brainwashing, and bring them back to God. It is with a heavy heart that I must tell you, with, tell you my ultimate revelation. 
After months of careful investigation and plentiful corroboration, I have confirmed what I have long sus suspected. We have within our, ch within our church one of those lost souls who has strayed into the clutches of the devil. The, one, the only real question now is, can she be saved? Pray with me, friends, pray with me. For I ask our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to come now and drive out the demons that have possessed this wayward girl. Jesus, please save this corrupted child from her own wickedness. All she must do is renounce her evil ways and accept your love. But will she? Jennifer Craft, do you admit that you are a soldier of Satan who has corrupted the children of our community and secretly plotted against all that is godly? What are you talking about? I'm not a Satanist. Have you been smoking wack wacky tobacco, Pastor Cook? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you loco, dude? That's total bullshit. I'm sorry, Pastor Cook, but you're mistaken. Jennifer is a Christian and a good girl. She's been going through some things since Eddie died, but she's never done anything evil and she's certainly not a devil worshiper. Oh, Mary, Mary, Mary. She really has you fooled, doesn't she? She doesn't have me fooled. She's my daughter and I know what she's up to. Jennifer's not a Satanist, period. Oh, yes, just like your husband knew what you were up to, right? David. But it's true, isn't it? that they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. Friends, this is exactly why I've implored you to live godly lives, lest your children fall prey to Satan like this single mother. I'm a widow, David, not a divorcee. Come on, let's get out of here. This guy's a clown. You see, friends, they scurry away like roaches when their evil meets the light of the Lord. But we know, don't we, the greatest blame is on Jennifer and her shameful dalliance with the devil. Have you nothing to say for yourself, girl? You're just wrong, Pastor Cook. I pray to God every day. I pray that my dad was still alive, my brother wasn't sick, and my mom had a great job. I even pray for you sometimes. You forgot the biggest secret, that this church is the secret Satan headquarters. That's right. Everybody, and Pastor Cook is the biggest Satanist of them all. Yeah, I have something to say. You're a fake. You pretend to be a Christian, but you're everything that Jesus warned us about. I hate you. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go, Jennifer, now. Hey, Joey, would you mind if we just call it a night? I'm sorry. I know you were excited about having dumplings. Of course, Mary. Don't worry about it. Mom, I'm sorry for what happened in there. I don't know if it was the shirt or what. Wow, Pastor Cook is really trying to step up the fire and brimstones, huh? I can't believe he did that. What was his problem? Jennifer, just stop, okay? I don't want to hear any more about it tonight. I just want to go home and go to bed. Hey, I'm going to bed, everybody. Sleep well. Good night, honey. I love you. Sleep well. Good night, Jesse. I love you. Love you, Jesse. Remember, hush, hush. Sleep well, Jesse. I'm sorry about tonight. Love you. Night, night. I'm going to bed, too. Mom, I really am sorry about what happened at church. Maybe you'll wake up and this will all have just been a burrito nightmare, right? Mom, you know, Pastor Cook was wrong, right? I've never done anything like on that tape. You know what, Jennifer? I'm done, okay? I'm done. You want to act like no one else matters and you can do whatever you want at school, at church, wherever? Well, guess what? Your choices affect all of us. You want to be treated like a grown-up? Start acting like one and take some responsibility. Mom, I promise I didn't do anything that... I am responsible, Mom. Remember that time the toilet was clogged? Why are you angry at me? Pastor Cook was an asshole. Even Joey called him a jerk. I don't want to hear any more excuses. You know I'm barely holding things together, and all you are doing is making it harder. Do you know I got two separate calls about you today? So you want to pretend you're an adult. Fine. Go out. Party. Be a loser. But don't expect me to tell you that it makes me happy, because right now you're making me miserable. I'm not trying to make you unhappy, Mom. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm not all bad, am I? Well, do you think it's easy for me? Everyone at school calls me the blue light bitch because we're so poor. I fucking hate my life. You're not bad, Jennifer. I just, I just can't keep doing this. I keep trying and trying and everything always falls apart. It's too much. I'm going to bed. Good night. Hey, is Jennifer home? This is Jennifer. No hablas ingles. Just kidding. Hi. Yeah, who is this? Hi, this is Kelly. Have you seen Ryan? I think he's at Stephanie Roberts' party. Yeah, I've seen him many times. He looks baked, even when he's not. No, why? What's up? 
I'm at the party right now and he's not here. I have to tell him something really important. Do you have his phone number? He doesn't have a phone. He lives out in the boonies. They're not even on the grid. He doesn't really do phones. What's so important? Look, it's kind of an emergency. Are you coming to the party? He needs to know about this like as soon as possible. Is he okay? What's the emergency? Did you all run out of weed? Are you serious? Is something the matter? Sorry, I can't tell you over the phone. I just, I know you're his friend and you'll want to help him. Can you come now? The sooner the better. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm grounded. Come on. Is this really an emergency? Yeah, I'll head over now. Jennifer, I'm serious. His whole family could be a big trouble. Just come over and I'll tell you so you can give him a heads up. You don't have to stay. All right, I'll be right there. If this is a sting, you should know I'm clean. I'll be there in a few. Fuck it. Okay, I'm heading over there. Hey, Jennifer, how's it going? Oh, look, it's Devil Girl herself. Mark. Hey, Stephanie, have you seen Kelly? Wow, if I knew it would have made me so famous, I would have worshipped Satan sooner. Whatever, Mark. Don't you have some roids to snort? You don't snort steroids, dumb nuts. Whatever, Stephanie. Have you seen Kelly? Now, why would you know that? Hmm, it's a mystery. And I don't have nuts shit for brains. You're lucky you're not a guy, blue light. Yeah, okay. Stephanie, do you know where Kelly is? Correct. Since I don't want you to flirt with me. Stephanie, have you seen Kelly? No, Mark. You're lucky I'm not a guy. Have you? Have any of you seen Kelly? Yeah, I think I saw her in back. Hey, do you want a can of Brimo? Thanks. Nah, I've got to get going. Um, aren't those really just water? No, thanks. Canned water is a scam. Jennifer, I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about what my dad did at church today. He's a total asshole, and I just, I want you to know that I, that I know you don't. It's cool, Chris. Don't worry about it. Don't worship the devil? Yeah, not on Saturdays. I mean, Tuesdays, maybe a little Sataning. Oh, and Thursday afternoons, of course. Yeah, right, Chris. Then why didn't you say anything at church? Your dad totally humiliated my mom. Would you please let me make it up to you? Um, maybe tomorrow I could buy you lunch? How about the Chichutes Brewery? We can't go there, Chris. We're minors. Uh, once again, my maturity and sophistication have confused matters. You see, sir, I'm actually only 17. Har har, I get it. First your dad humiliates my mom, and then you stand me up at a bar. Get stuffed, Chris. Look, I'm really, really sorry that my dad did such is such a freak. I feel really badly about it, and I just want to make it up to you. Just think about it, okay? I'll be outside the school tomorrow at noon. I hope you show up. Okay, I'll try to make it. I need to go find someone. See you later. All right, but if I come, you're buying. None of that going Dutch crap. I've got to run. Later. Well, don't hold your breath, Chris. I've got to go. Bye. Wow, the town Satanist has made it to the party. Strange, as it's a boring one. Very funny. Have you seen Kelly? Ah, uh, boring up until now. Just wait till you see the demon conjuring I have planned. Do I know you? Well, I'm in social studies with you, but probably not. I just moved here this summer. Really? I'm sorry. I'm Jennifer. What's your name? Welcome to Hell, Oregon. We have two seasons, dry as fuck and cold as fuck. Your stay includes complimentary alcoholism and, red and a redneck boyfriend. Are you sure? I feel like I'd notice you. What's your name again? Nicole Thompson, goth girl extraordinaire, at your service. You can call me Nikki. Nice to meet you. Where did you move here from? And you can call me Al. What are you drinking? I think you might be Ben's only goth. Do you get a lot of shit for it? You know, it's weird, but people here don't seem to even know what little box to fit me into. Maybe I should start wearing an upside down cross necklace just to make it easier for them. Hey, you want to see something? This dark syrupy potion may look similar to what people around here call coffee, but it's actually a secret concoction that I've dubbed good coffee. It's completely different. Have a sip. Wow, that actually is really good. How did you make that? Oh my god, that's delicious. Are you sure it's legal for us to have that? I mean, we're still minors, right? No thanks, I already feel too anxious as it is. Hey, there's Kelly's cousin, Julie. Looks like they're back from M&W. Thanks, I'll go talk to her. Hey, it was nice talking to you. Alas, I must leave your company and return to the land of redneck teen angst. Catch you later. God, I hope I don't have to talk to Wayne. Hey, thanks for the chat. See you around. Hi, Jennifer. I think Kelly wants to talk with you. Hi, Julie. Yeah, do you know where she is? Hey, yes, I've been playing Where's Kelly all night. Have you seen her? Thanks, I thought she was with you. Oh, yeah, I'll show you. Hey, what do you think about Nikki? 
I like her. She's pretty different from most Bendites. Pretty chill for a goth. We bonded over mortuary science at Anne Rice. She seems cool. What do you think? Yeah, she's a trip. It's like she reminds me the world is so much bigger than here. I want to see it someday. Me too. Hey, I'm sorry, but Kelly said she needed to talk with me. I don't know, Julie. If you get a little taste of the bigger world, then what? You might want something really crazy, like to be president. Maybe it's all the same, you know? I mean, Bend, Portland, Paris, everywhere probably sucks. Maybe all the cities suck, but I mean all the magic little spots hidden throughout the world, and all the people and all the cultures, the music, the foods, mmm, burritos and egg rolls and spaghetti and... Julie, do you think you could show me where Kelly is now? Julie, are you like super stoned or something? I wish you were right, but I'll probably never know. Hey, Kelly was saying... Oh, sorry, I admit it. I'm a little baked. But anyways, Kelly's over here. Jennifer, you made it. Tell her, Wayne. You tell her, Kelly. I've got to make a phone call. Right now? Who are you calling? Jesus, Kelly, don't be so clingy. I need to call my connect. Something is off with this stuff. I'm not clingy. You cheated on me. You're a philanthropist. Hmm, I think you mean philanderer? You're so dumb, Kelly. I didn't cheat on you. I was getting a massage. Yeah, right, Wayne. I'm not stupid. You can't even read, bitch. I'm dyslexic. You mean retarded. Kelly's so dumb that... Kelly's not dumb. She knows more about animals than anyone I... Whatever. i got to make that call. Whatever yourself. Wow, Kelly. You need to get away from that guy. Jeez. So doing coke really does make people assholes. Wayne's a dickwad, Kelly. Why are you still with him? Wayne's not a bad guy. He's just not been feeling real good. Kelly, Wayne's mean to you, and he's, like, way too old to be with you. Whatever, Julie, you're just jealous because I have somebody that loves me, and you don't got nobody. That's not true. I have Frito, and he loves me more than anything. Bearded dragons don't count. You're so immature. Kelly, what did you need to tell me about Ryan? I think lizard love is probably underrated. I want to learn more about it. But for now, did you have news about Ryan? I hate to break it to you, Kelly, but Wayne actually is a bad guy. You know, it's better to be alone to be with someone like that. You don't know him like I do, Jen. He's so smart, and he's like always doing nice things for people. Like last week, he wanted to take his niece on a hunting trip. Just the two of them. His niece? You mean Karen? Yeah, isn't that sweet? There's something really not right about this situation, Kelly. Stop it, Julie. You don't get to say how I live my life. You're my cousin, not my mom. Your mom doesn't like Wayne. Oh my god, Julie, stop it or I'm never going to talk to you again. Jennifer, do you want to know about Ryan or not? Yes, please. What's the news? Kelly, when even the town Satanist is creeped out by your boyfriend, maybe it's time to find a new one. We're just worried about you, Kelly. I think Wayne is taking advantage of you. You just think I'm stupid like everyone else does. If Wayne was a creep, I would know, okay? Kelly, I don't think you're stupid. Guys like Wayne are con men. They know just what to say. They could fool anyone. Imagine you had a 16-year-old daughter and Wayne was chasing after her. You'd be like, grab the shotgun. That dude's a perv. I know you're not dumb. Like, you wouldn't go out with a 10-year-old because that'd be weird, right? But how much older is Wayne? I don't know. I just want people to think... I just don't want people to think I'm stupid. And Wayne is nice. Well, he was nice. I don't know. Hey, I need to tell you about Ryan. Okay, so it's actually a really big deal. Wayne heard from the dude that there's like a huge drug bust coming. It's going to be at some giant pot form out in the boonies that's run by two hippies that sell pottery. Sound familiar? Oh my god, you think it's Ryan's parents? But Ryan is stone cold sober. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Are you sure they were talking about his family? How trustworthy is this tip from Wayne? Who did he hear it from? Definitely. Wayne said the cops heard these hippies even have their own strain of weed called Goldilocks. Holy shit, I need to warn Ryan. I don't know, I'm sure there are lots of hippie potters in the boonies with strains named that, right? Fucking cops are going to ruin his whole family's life to keep people swallowing Prozac and Percocet. Hey, did you tell her? Yeah, she knows. She just needs to warn Ryan. Great, look, Kelly, I'm sorry I blew up on you. I just, I'm feeling really not right. Hey, I want you to know, I love you, little honey. Aw, you're so sweet. Isn't he sweet? Are you too ready to go to Crane Prairie? This party blows. Hey Jennifer, I have an idea. Why don't you come with us and we'll swing by Ryan's before we go to the reservoir? I don't know, that's pretty out of the way. Come on Wayne, please. 
Fine, but I want to leave now. I've got to go to Wagner's early tomorrow. Yo, y'all need to leave, like now. Why? What's up? A neighbor must have called the cops. They're at the front door right now. Shit, where do we go? Go out the side. Just be quiet. Hurry. Are you coming with us, Jen? Wayne can take you to Ryan's. Thanks, but I need to get back home. I'll try to go to Ryan's in the morning. Hopefully I won't be too late. Fuck it. Might as well. My mom's already going to disown me. This is why I need my own car. Yeah, I'll go with you. Hey, did you see Haley's comment? You mean a few years ago? No, I heard about it, but I never saw it. Did you? No, but I saw Haley's spitball. Far less impressive, but much easier to locate. How about you? I don't think we looked for it. I thought it was really hard to see. My dad took us to an observatory on Pine Mountain that U of O operates. It was so amazing. It blew my mind that we were looking at the same comet that people have been seeing for hundreds and thousands of years. I mean, like the universe is like so big. It's just like we can't even really fit its bigness in our minds, you know? That's really cool, Julie. I didn't know you were interested in comets and stuff. Wow, it's weird that that comet is even older than Ronald Reagan. Cool that you saw it, though. How did you get to see that? I didn't even know there was an observatory near here. My dad works at the observ observatory as an astronomer. He wants to make an even better one here that's open to everyone. He says that the more people learn about space, the more they realize they don't know. Your dad is an astronomer? How did I not know that? That's pretty rad, Julie. Oh, I thought they didn't allow anyone with a college degree inside the city limits. That's really nice of him, but no one around here is going to pay for that. It'd just be more welfare communism to them. Hey, you want to hear something really wild? Totally, what is it? Is it that NASA knows there are aliens? I knew it. I'm scared to say yes, but yes. Oh, you're going to love this. There's this English astronomer named Fred Hoyle who has this totally crazy theory. He says that comets are chock full of extraterrestrial life. When they fly past us, their dust seeds our planet with new life, and that's how life on Earth first started. He thinks the whole universe is filled with living creatures that are related, spread by these free love comets sailing through its galaxies. So like aliens are like our sisters and brothers. Isn't that a trip? I don't know what to make of that. I thought we all came from like primordial soup or something. Impossible. Pastor Cook says God accidentally made us while he was bored one day. Then why wouldn't they come for us? Like, help us out? I mean, wouldn't they care? Maybe they're just as fucked up as we are. Yeah, you notice how, like, their explanations always make humans kind of stupid and worthless? Like, we can have either, like, no soul or higher purpose or we exist just to kiss God's butt. Like, I don't think either of those views would make sense to our ET sisters, right? That's weird to think about. I mean, like, what would make sense to them? If only we could take the Greyhound down to Area 51, we could find out. I don't know. Sometimes I feel pretty stupid. How would I even know if I have a soul? <clears throat> How would I even know if I have a soul? Okay, get this. My aunt is like a total nature lover, and she's really good friends with this dude named Terrence McKenna. He says that people have the potential to talk across dimensions and realities, whole existences, and some of those aliens across the universe are just waiting to connect with us. All we have to do is just get our minds on the right frequency. And that's what these are for. Have you ever taken shrooms before? I've never done anything other than smoke weed. And I don't like, you know, hard stuff. What are those? They look like little dried out penises. I don't know, Julie. You're kind of sketching me out right now. Don't worry. These are totally natural. My mom and I picked them. They're called Oregon Blues. And they're really powerful teachers. I was going to take some at the reservoir, but I feel like there's something that's been drawing me to you all night. All night long. I think I'm supposed to eat these with you. What do you think? Want to talk to the aliens? That's super nice of you, Julie, but I'm just not up for anything that crazy tonight. No thanks. I already talked to my ET doll each night. Speaking of which, I should probably phone home soon. My mom is probably worried about me. You really think all that stuff is possible, like talking across dimensions? Okay, cool. Totally. Yeah, it's probably not the right night for it anyway. Whoa, looks like we're pulling over. Something's off. We don't need your stupid truck anyway. What's going on, Kelly? Wayne here is a fucking liar, that's what. I lied because you're so immature, I knew you'd freak out like this. You're a fucking cheat and a pervert. I'm not a pervert, you're just jealous because she's cuter than you. She's your niece, you're so gross, Wayne. Fuck you, you fucking trailer trash bitch. 
Enjoy your walk home, slut. Fuck you. I hope you fucking get AIDS and die. Holy shit, Kelly. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. He's such a fucking asshole. Fuck. Are you sure you don't want to talk about it? Yes, goddammit. Where the fuck even are we? I don't know, but it's freezing out here. How are we going to get back to town? I don't know. Hitchhike? Hey, there's someone in that car. I know her. That's the preacher lady. Who? You know, Pastor Cook's wife. Let's ask her for a ride. Dude, we'll fucking freeze to death out here. Come on. I'm actually feeling kind of scared, Jen. Can we please just see if she's nice? Um, sorry to bother you, Mrs. Cook, but my boyfriend just left us stranded. Aunt Mrs. Cook, you're a riot. You know that. Sorry, I was just wondering if... Hey, I know you. Come here. Yeah, you're Jennifer Kraft, aren't you? Yes, I am. Jennifer who? I actually just arrived from really far, like another galaxy. Why? Planning to run me over? Oh, Jennifer, I am so, so, oh my God, aren't you girls freezing? Do you need a ride somewhere? Yes, please. Can you take us back to town, please? Of course, get in. Oh my God, why didn't you say so? Well, come on, you too, Jennifer. Please, let me make it up to you. Thanks, I'm so cold. I don't know, Mrs. Cook. Stranger danger, you know? Okay, fine. Just don't try anything funny. You smell like... Are you drunk? I've had a little teeny weeny itsy bitsy drop to drink, but I'm fine. I promise. Look, if you feel like I'm not driving carefully, just let me... Just tell me and I'll pull over and you can drive the rest of the way, okay? Okay, please try to be careful. If you really do... If you'll really do that, okay. This night just gets weirder and weirder. What's next? Are we going to spot Elvis? Why not just let me drive now? Don't worry, I'll go really slowly and carefully. I promise, don't worry. All right, Kelly's dropped off and now we're almost to your house, Julie. This isn't so bad, right? Thanks, Mrs. Cook. My house is the one at the end of the street. Gloria, remember, Mrs. Cook is my mom. Right, thanks, Gloria. Hey, Jennifer, do you think we should call the cops about Wayne? I mean, when he was Kelly's boyfriend, I felt like it would be betraying her. Now I feel like we need to protect girls from him. What are you girls talking about? Oh, sorry, nothing. That's my house with the Volvo. Hey, Jen, I really liked hanging out with you. I hope we can talk more soon. Okay, we're here, Julie, safe and sound. Thanks, Gloria. Bye, Jennifer. I just need to stop here for a moment. At my school? Who wouldn't want to hang out in the high school parking lot late at night? I live pretty close by. I'll just walk from here. Thanks for the lift. Did you know this used to be my high school not that long ago? We used to come late at night, park right about here and smoke pot. You used to smoke pot? Is this where you tell me that you learned your lesson and never again dabbled in reefer madness? I never touched that stuff. Just say no, right? Then you're a lot more innocent than I ever was. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. You think being mad at the system started with your generation? America's always been like this. The last time I sat here, it was with your dad. Yep, Eddie told me his draft number had been called and I just started crying and I felt like I never could stop, you know? You don't know what it was like. And I had known him since we were in diapers. And here was this kid, I mean, he was just a kid, being sent off to kill people in a place we couldn't even find on a map. I still don't. Why were we there, really? Are you okay? But not everyone went, right? I mean, wasn't it, if you got the dough, you don't need to go? Probably the same reason we keep messing around in the Middle East. Yes, thank you. I, I just, it still hurts. Not all of them came back, you know. And I, I really loved him. You loved my dad? Wow, this life just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Are you serious? I don't think you should be telling me this, Gloria. I'm going to walk home from here. You should go home too and sleep it off. I really did, but he didn't love me, not in that way. Look, Jennifer, there's something wrong with David. I don't know why he's the way he is, but he's just, he just can't get over what he'd call losing. See, his family and mine were really close. They are both rich from the timber in the area. And well, it was just kind of expected that we were going to marry each other. The only one who was against it was my grandmother, Maggie Aradia. After my grandfather died, grandma brought in a live-in caretaker, and that caretaker was Eddie's mom, Diana. My parents were always traveling, doing the political thing, so I pretty much grew up on Grandma's farm, and with Diana's husband not being in the picture, Eddie grew up there with me. It was like we were brother and sister. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, it sounds like you and my dad were really close. It's strange the way everyone in this town is so connected. It's like we're all related. Wait, no, that would be Alabama. So what are you saying? If you marry David and not my dad, then what losing does he need to get over? Losing your mother. Let me explain. You see, I loved your father first, but it didn't matter. When we were in junior high and your mom moved to town, it was like Eddie had never seen a girl before. He was absolutely wild about her, but he wasn't the only one he took a liking to marry. David was the most popular kid in school back then. What with his daddy's money and good looks. He had been trying to get me to go out with him all through junior year, but I kept putting him off, hoping your dad would see me as something more than a friend. But all that changed when David met your mom. David decided he wanted to be with her, even though she was dirt poor and never much liked him. He and Eddie got into it over her, each trying to convince your mom that she would be better off with one or the other of them. But your mom didn't need any convincing. She fell in love with Eddie damn near as fast as he was smitten with her. But Eddie was from the wrong side of the tracks and started to get mixed up with some biker gang when he got back from Nam, Your mom wasn't going to have any of that and eventually she told him that it was either her or the club. He chose Mary fast as grease lightning and said he'd give up drinking and troublemaking forever. To David, your dad was just another white trash criminal, unredeemable and unrepentant. He warned Mary that choosing Eddie was like making a deal with the devil. Hell, I swear he became a pastor just to prove to Mary that he was a better guy than Eddie. Never could convince her though. She and Eddie were head over heels, heels in love. And me? I was nothing but the leftovers. Nobody pined for me like they did for Mary. By the time we graduated, the Arabians and the Cooks already had the wedding planned and paid for. David married me and we had Chris. But there's not been a lick of love the whole marriage. It's all a sham. But that's not the worst of it. About four years ago, I saw Eddie just a little before, you know, he used to go visit Grandma at her old farm, checking in on her and making sure she had everything she needed. I was there too, and well, I got my wish to tell him how I felt. But things didn't go as I expected. David found out. I don't even know how. He wasn't even angry at me. He didn't seem to care about me at all. But he burned with absolute hatred for Eddie. When Eddie died, oh, how David was there for your mom, and then some. He made helping her more important than even rebuilding his church. I knew what he was up to, but what was I supposed to do? Mary was devastated, and you kids, we all felt for you. But then something changed. I don't know what it was, but it was sudden. Maybe he made a move and she told him no. I really don't know. But since then, David's hatred for Eddie turned more and more into blaming your mom, saying how she ruined his life and everything is ultimately her fault. Do you understand what I'm saying? David knows that you're not a Satanist any more than Bob Dole's a communist. He just wants to ruin your mother's life. And he hates you because you're Eddie's daughter. Something's deeply wrong with that man, and I don't know the skeletons in his closet. He's so secretive and angry. I just had to tell you, it's all my fault. If I hadn't wanted Eddie so badly, but your father, he was... I'm just so sorry, Jennifer. I, I really don't know what to say. I know that what David did wasn't your fault. It's, it's okay. I should probably go. Don't cry. What happened wasn't your fault, Gloria. Now, who could it be? Could it be Satan? See, you can still laugh. Things will be okay. Does my mom know that my dad cheated on her? It wasn't like that, I promise. We didn't even... Yes, Mary knows, and she has her own, her own secrets. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I just had to tell you that I'm so sorry, and I hope that you and Mary can forgive me someday. I forgive you. I just, I don't want my mom to suffer anymore. She's been through so much, and this thing that Pastor Cook did. Relax, I'm the town Satanist. Who am I to judge anyone? Just maybe talk to my mom sometime, okay? Maybe it'd make things better for both of you. No, duh, you're sorry. You're a liar and a cheat and a hypocrite. You just sat there while Pastor Cook was trying to destroy my family. Why didn't you say anything then? Thank you, Jennifer. I totally agree. Thank you so much. Really, um, I should really take you home now. Thank you. Jennifer, where have you been? I went to that party I told you about. I didn't do anything wrong. Why are you so angry? Mom, wow, are we so poor that we had to start selling donuts out of our trailer? What do you mean, Mom? I just went out to get some fresh air. Why is there a cop here? Jennifer Kraft, I'm placing you under arrest for arson in the first degree for burning down the Kingdom Hill Church. Oh my God, Jennifer, why did you do this? Chief Armstrong, what am I supposed to do? What do I, what do, I do? She's going to jail. Arson is a very serious crime, Mary. You'll need to get a lawyer and have him call the courts. 
a lawyer? What do you mean serious? She's just a kid. Well, chances are she'll be transferred to adult court. She's looking at 20 years, maybe more, depending on what charges are added. You've got to go, Mary. Step aside. Come on, Mom. It'll be okay. How will it be okay? How will it ever be okay? Why, Jennifer? Why? There must be a mistake. I don't understand. Isn't arson starting fires? There's no way that was me. I totally flunked out of Girl Scouts. Don't worry, Mom. I didn't do anything. That's enough chit-chat. I don't want to hear another word out of either of you, or you'll be charged with disturbing the peace. Let's go. It's a long drive to the jail. What the fuck is this Indian doing trying to flag me down? God damn it. Okay, listen, Jennifer. You stay right there and don't move a muscle. I've got to get this drunk Indian's piece of shit truck out of the road. I'll be right back. Hey, hey, kid. Jenny, can you hear me? Is there someone there? Wait, am I on camera camera? Didn't you hear the cop? I'm supposed to not... I'm supposed to move... I'm not supposed to move a muscle. Okay, I'm going to jimmy the door. When I do... Slide out as quiet as you can, then follow me to my bike. There, got it. Okay, let's go. Wait, who are you? I don't know you. Thanks, giant scary dude. I'm coming. No, I'm not guilty. I'm not going to get myself in more hot water by trying to escape. You did it. Nice job, Dirty. Couldn't have done it without the help from your aunt and her car. Man, that stupid cop didn't have a clue that this was a distraction. <clears throat> Dennis has always been as dumb as a rock. And how are you feeling, Jenny? Are you all right? <clears throat> I, how do you know my name? Do I know you? Do I have amnesia or something? How is it that you all know me, but I don't know you? Who are you guys? What are you planning to do with me? Jenny, I'm Patch, and you've met Dirty. We're friends of your dad. I know it's been a while since you've seen us, and, well, that's not because we didn't want to come by. It's because your ma told us she didn't want us around no more. But just so you know, please part of me, that's not because of anything we did. She just wanted to leave a certain part of Eddie's history in the past. Maybe it was too painful. She thought we had been a bad influence on your dad. But see, that wasn't the case, and these last couple weeks, well, we've gotten a whole lot of new information and knew we'd need to be looking out for you. I know this is all probably, I know this all probably is confusing and you'd normally want to check us all out and everything, but we don't have a lot of time. I need to go warn some folks about some bad shit going down, but first we need to ask you about something real quick like. It's about your dad. A few days before he died, he told me that David Cook was coming after him. Your dad said that he had some dirt on David that he figured would have been enough for protection, but I guess it wasn't. Somebody took him out, Jenny. Somebody connected to David. Wait, are you saying that my dad's death wasn't accidental? Pastor Cook had my dad killed? If there's one thing life is teaching me right now, it's never ask how could this day get any worse. But could you please explain? Are you serious? Do you have actual proof? See, Eddie's death is not the only thing that Pastor's guilty of. He's been running a drug operation on the side for years, selling chemicals to crank labs all around Oregon. And now he's got some kind of new grand plan and is, get, and is setting to turn this whole state into mess central. Yep, and that's why he's pinned burning down his church on you, even though he was the one behind it. And that crooked cop's in on it with him. You see, Jenny, you were set up. Why would Pastor Cook burn down his own church? You're telling me Pastor Cook killed my dad, burned down his own church, and is secretly a drug lord? Next, you're going to tell me he doesn't always rewind rental videos. Do you have any evidence of any of this? I mean, I hate the guy, but a drug lord? He doesn't seem like it to me. Look, I know it's hard to believe, but we talked to two fully patched guys who heard David admit it all himself. Well, besides setting you up, we didn't know about that. I've been telling him for the past week, trying to get something we can take him down with, but he's careful as a fox. We knew he was up to something, but I'll be damned if I knew he was gonna bring, it up, bring you into it. But setting you up is going to be his undoing. When Dirty called and told me what was going on, I remembered something Eddie said to me four years ago. I damn near shit myself when he told me. I was like, why the hell didn't you say this before? It just seems so unimportant. And besides, you know how Eddie was always joking. What is it? What did my dad tell you? Well, that was a hell of a buildup. But what's the punchline? I don't fucking understand any of this. Why am I even here? 
Well, you see, Jenny, Eddie told me that he also told you about the dirt he had on David. So if you tell us what it is, then we can stop him for good. We can't do much with the local police, but if we can show that David's up to no good, we can pull in other cops who will investigate the fire and you'll clear your name. So see, you're a godsend. Just please, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Uh, um, I can't think of anything. I'm sorry, I really don't think my dad told me anything about Pastor Cook. I don't think he even mentioned him once. You know that feeling when you get the publisher sweepstakes announcement that you've won millions of dollars and you get all excited and then you read the fine print? Well, prepare yourself, guys, because I don't have any dirt on Pastor Cook. Sorry. Jesus H. Christ, are you fucking kidding me? My dad never told me anything about David. I didn't even know they hated each other until years after he died. What? Are you kidding? You mean... Ah, oh, fucking hell. I should have known it. Getting my hopes up for nothing. You think he was kidding, Dirty? Just joshing around? Who the fuck knows, but obviously this little girl can't help us. She's already in a bunch of trouble herself. Ah, oh, Jesus. Just from bad to worse. I'll tell you what we should do. After I warn the hippies, I'll take the fall for burning the church. That's the least I can do for Eddie and Mary. Good idea, but it needs to be me, not you. I've got the history with David, the motive, all of it. Even with Armstrong in on their fix, I'll bet they couldn't resist putting me away for it. Besides, it was my life Eddie saved, not yours. Damn well could have been mine, Patch. Besides, you're a con. They ain't got a felony on me yet. I go on, do my time, it's done. If they get their paws on you, you'll spend the rest of your life at OSP. Best let, best let me take the fall. I'm not agreeing, Dirty. Are you sure you don't remember anything your dad told you about the pastor? Would have been around the time he passed away. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm just so tired. I just feel like crying. I mean, would he have told me in riddles? Maybe bazooka bubblegum jokes? I feel like I'd remember, but I'm not sure. No, he didn't even go with us to church. How did you all know my dad? We all were in the same deployment in Nam. 1970 No Volunteer Fun Brigade. Good name, except it wasn't fun at all. We couldn't wait to get back, especially Eddie, and especially once Mary sent him a picture of you freshly born. You, your mom, Jesse, that's all life was about to him. Yeah, he sure loved you all. You know, to be honest, I didn't take to his humor right away, though he was always cracking a joke at the wrong time. But then he up and saved my life. He pulled me out of all that fire and smoke and gave me the biggest shit-eating grin I ever saw. And then he just said, you owe me a pound cake. Jesus, I love that guy. Your dad was a good man, Jenny, and your mom's even better. We gotta make things right for you and your family. Listen, I gotta go warn the Allens. Why don't you sleep some, Jenny? See if you remember anything in the morning. I have an old lazy boy in there that you can make into a bed. I'll fix you a can of Dinty more and you can catch some Z's. Everything will look a little better in the morning. All right, I'm gonna ride. Take it easy, Dirty. You too, brother, I'll be back soon. Tina, what is it? What's wrong? Bobby, we had to arrest Harry this morning. We had set up a sting at the Allen's house when he rode right up and told them what was going on during the bye. There was no choice but to bust him along with the Allen's. Oh, come on, Tina. Really? Dirty? What were you doing out there anyway, ruining a bunch of hippies' lives? I told you, Bobby, there's a pressure from above. You've been wasting my time with hearsay about David Cook for two weeks, but haven't given me anything I can bring him in on. Hell, I don't have enough to question him. They were there and heard it straight. David and Triple Neck are going to be making more crystal meth in this county than in all of California. Well, guess what, Bobby? Motorcycle gang members aren't exactly known for their reliable testimony, especially if you won't even tell me who they are. I explained it already. There's a civil war in the club right now. Triple Neck is trying to get them over to selling crank, and Dirty's trying to keep the tweakers out. That's not going going too well for Harry, is it? Besides, how do you know he isn't in on it? because I watched the man bury his old lady after she got into that stuff. All we're asking you to do is stop harassing a bunch of patchouli wearers long enough to bust the real criminals. Damn it, Patch, don't you get it? There's someone upstairs pushing the pot growers out of this area. If I can't convince my boss that there's anything to arrest here other than the small-time hippies, that's what he's going to do. It's not my fault. Not your fault? The Allens have five kids, Tina. Whose fault is it when they send when they get sent to foster homes, split up from each other. The whole life's a mess. I don't know, Bobby, their parents, maybe? The pasty-ass government that's still scared of loco weed? 
or maybe it's yours. You told me you'd have something on cook by now. Well, do you have anything at all? I think so, but I just need a little more time. Well, that's the one thing I can assure you that you haven't got. And while you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs and Harry's in jail, do you know what David Cook's doing? The whole fucking town has come out in a big fundraiser so he can rebuild his church like he didn't burn the damn thing down himself. Oh, you think I didn't know that? But you know what, Bobby? I can't do a goddamn thing about it unless I have evidence. Jesus, Tina, what am I supposed to do? Even you can't get a warrant to investigate his company. No shit, Sherlock. Why do you think I'm here? Look, I can keep them from closing things on the Allens and Harry today, maybe tomorrow if I'm lucky. But if I don't have hard proof by then, it's over. Bobby, they're pulling my whole division out this week. Not even Nancy Reagan wants to waste any more money ruining these Hicks' lives. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Well, goddammit, Patch, I didn't come to see a convict for his cooking. If I can guarantee a trafficking conviction of David Cook to my boss, I promise you I will get him to drop the charges against Harry and the hippies. And Jennifer Craft? Yes, sir. Something tells me that a drug lord is going to be a lot more likely to be convicted of arson fraud. Do you understand? Do we understand each other? We all know there are secrets over there at the animal supply plant. If you really are telling the truth about Cook, get me proof. I don't care where it's from or how you get it as long as it will stick. Wilco. You know, Tina, you could come by for dinner some night. We'll see. If I don't have evidence, they're sending me back to San Francisco. Understood, Tina. I'm on it. Good luck, Bobby. Jenny, did you hear all that? Yeah, hey, I'm really sorry, but I just don't think my dad ever told me anything about David. Was that the DEA? Is there anyone in this town who doesn't know more than I do about what's going on? She meant the Allen Farm, right? The Pottery Hippies? That's my friend's family. Yeah, Tina's with the Drug Enforcement. She wants to help us, but the pencil pushers and bought-off cops are making it impossible. Dollars to donuts, the cops will be here soon looking for me. You, anyone they think is a threat to David. Listen, I've got to go over to the Cook Animal Supply Plant and see if I can find something that'll show that David Cook, what David Cook's up to. That's where he moves the chemicals, but he's very careful. I've got to sneak in and hope I can find something real juicy, and then I can get it to Tina. If I can do that, Jenny, then everyone will be okay. Oops. I'm going with you to the plant. I want to help. Let's see. I messed up, guys. Sorry. So that's how you undo a choice. So, Jenny, did you hear all that? We got that. Yeah, they're really sorry. Don't think my dad told me anything. We read that. <clears throat> You've got a choice to make. You can come with me to the animal supply plant, and we'll see how this plays out, or I can drop you off in town where you can turn yourself in. If you turn yourself in, things should be okay for you. If I can get the evidence we need, I'll be able to cut a deal with Tina and get you out. And if I can't, I'll say I burned down the church and made you take the blame for it. You understand? You don't need to get further wrapped up in this mess if you don't want to. I'm going to go with you to the plant. I want to help. If you can't find evidence, then Ryan's whole family goes to jail. And besides, there's no guarantee that anyone will believe that it was you who burned the church and not me. You know, I'm not even really sure what to do. Does it help for me to go with you to the plant? And more importantly, if I'm your lookout, does that mean I get to drive? I don't want to, I don't want to turn myself in. I'm scared, Patch. I think Pastor Cook and that cop want me behind bars, and I don't think your confession will change that. All right, Jenny, let's go. All right, looks like there's a couple trucks in the parking lot, probably rent-a-cops. Hard to know if there's one at the entry or if it's just a telecom, but see how there's a gap in the bottom of that fence? I think I can slide under it. Okay, Jenny, wish me luck. If I'm not back... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. That's Chief Armstrong's cruiser, and he's headed right this way. He'll find some excuse to haul me into jail, I'm sure of it. Listen, Jenny, I don't have any other options, or I wouldn't ask you to do this. If you get out on that side and wait at those bushes, after he takes me away, you can get into the factory and see if you find evidence. Here, this is Tina's card and my keys. Find the evidence, go into town, and call her. Good luck, Jenny. All right, here I go. Holy shit, I just knew I was going to have to do this. I just knew it. Good luck, Patch. No, Patch, I can't. I don't know the first thing about breaking into a place.
quite a bit this one's a lot of fun. Found the tapes. That's the evidence you needed to call Tina. This is Assistant Agent in Charge, Tina Lopez of the Drug Enforcement Agency. I'm out of the office currently, but will return your call as soon as I can. Please leave your name, number, and extension at the beep. Bueno. Hi, it's Jennifer. Is Angela there? Buenos dias, habla el Presidente de America. Esta Angela? Good morning, is Angela available? Jennifer. Yes, hi, Mrs. Garcia. Is Angela around? Si, sí, la Senora Garcia. Se encuentra Angela? Uh, maybe, if it was Jennifer, would Angela be available? You're very funny, Jennifer. Si. Sí. Hey, what's up, fly girl? You haven't heard? Oh my god, Angela, there's so much I need to tell you. Well, you know, I've been arrested for felony, escaped, learned the pastor is a murderous drug lord, you know, the usual. Here's the deeds. Things are horrible, Angela. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me explain. Holy shit, Jennifer. What are you going to do? Mm, you need to find out what's on those computer disks. They probably have all the evidence you need to clear your name and save Ryan. Yeah, but where am I going to find a computer? Great. I'll just pop it into my microwave and hope it prints them out. Wow, kids like us don't have computers. Even our school doesn't have them. I know who, Nelson Cox. He's a total computer nerd and he'd help you. I have calculus with him and he's always super nice. Just a little awkward. I have his number here. It's 593-5555. It's his own line. Thanks, Angela. I'll give him a call and see if he'll help. Great, I'll just give him a call and say, hey, it's the town Satanist slash arsonist. Mind if I use your computer? He has his own line? God, his parents must be rich. Yeah, his dad invented some kind of electronic phone thing. Anyhow, give him a call. He'll help. When you're done, call me back. I want to go with you. Beep, zzz, whine, zzz, zzz, click. Hey, who's this? Uh, is Nelson there? What was that strange sound? It sounded like the love child of a cat and Max Hedrum. Who is this? I asked you who's calling. Wait, is this Jennifer? It's me, Nikki. It's Jennifer Kraft. Hey, are you safe? The whole town is out looking for you. Nikki, oh my god, things are so crazy right now. If by safe you mean on the run, starving, and penniless, then I'm safer than the gold in Fort Knox. Who are you just talking to? Nelson, this is his BBS line. Hey, is there anyone we can help you? Obviously, we know you didn't burn down at church. Yeah, actually, I have some computer diskettes that I think could prove I'm innocent. Well, no, that I didn't burn, burn down a church. I forgot my marshmallows, but seriously, can Nelson help me with some computer stuff? Nikki, what Pastor Cook is up to is so messed up, but I think I have proof. Problem is that it's on some computer disks. <clears throat> Why didn't you say so? Nelson is a total hacker. He can help you. We're down in his parents' basement. You can come in through the alley so no one sees you. Wow, I'm so excited. Aiding and abetting is the shit. See you soon. Wow, he's still using five and a quarter inch discs? What century is he from? What do you mean? How big the disc is? I know, right? Like, it doesn't even have a parental advisory sticker on it. I'm sorry, but I don't speak nerd. Could I have that in English? Yeah, so the disc is like single-sided and pretty old. Like, he probably isn't even good with computers. Wouldn't know an autoexec.bat from a config.sys. <laughs> Nelson, what are you getting at is... Oh yeah, whatever's on the disk should be really easy to hack. I'm just going to, oh that's weird, let me load Norton Utilities. Huh, 
Looks like it's all encrypted. There's an ex executable though. Hmm, let's try that. Hope it doesn't give me a virus. <laughs> right. Um, what is that? Whoa, that's weird. What is this Bible man up to? Is it asking for a password? Not exactly. It's like a puzzle lock or something. Oh, hmm. Let's quit this and let me disassemble this. Huh, it looks like it makes some kind of one-time pad thingy. What does that mean? It means that if we don't unlock it, there's no way to know what's on the disk. But I thought you said there wasn't a password. It's not a word. Let's start it again. See, we need to fit the right pieces, and then I think that will crack it. Is that a Bible verse? I don't know. I've never even been inside a church. Sorry, don't look at me. I can barely remember the mass responses. Shit, I wish I had paid attention at St. Mary's. I'm sorry, Jennifer. We're never going to be able to crack this. Wait, I think I know this one. May I try? Wow, all these years and my mom was right. Teaching me Bible verses might actually come in handy. Let me take a closer look. Oh, Jesus. Is this what my life has come down to? Fine, scoot over, Rover. Let Jenny take over. Okay, so... The key here is that it's the King James Version. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's, then would I speak and not fear him. And this takes forever to do, but I'm going to show you how it works. And um, just give you a feel for how it can be done. And I've only done it once. My eight-year-old did it... Um, in like 20 tries but the good news is so you see how it works you get to feel for it um, you can skip this puzzle if you love puzzles take your time do it as many times as you want and this is how you do it but um, if you don't like puzzles then skip it holy cow how did you do that fucking hey Jennifer nice job Oh my god, you're so fucking cool. You're like literally the best Satanist arsonist I have ever met. Look at these numbers. I think they're like payments. But what are these ones on the side? I know what they are. See how they are in pairs? They're bank accounts. Why are there so many? Haven't you ever watched Miami Vice? It's so he doesn't get flagged by the feds. Ah, wow, that is like the real thing. Here, I'll print them out. Now all you need to do is give this to Tina and she'll have enough to bust him. Here, you can use this phone. What's that thing on it? It's a gold box. Don't worry. It makes it so your call can't be traced. Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Tina Lopez. Um, hi, Tina. I have evidence about David Cook. Wow, that's a long title. It makes me feel kind of inadequate. Like I need to add some middle names or something. I have some very important information for you. Can you meet me in person? Who is this? I. It's Jennifer Kraft. Um, well, Deep Throat is taken, so how about Shallow Belly? It's kind of still gross, huh? Anyway, I think we both know someone named Patch. Someone who's feeling framed and needs help. I had a feeling it was you, Jennifer. I don't know what Bobby told you, but you're too late. This operation is wrapping up. And just so you know, the cops aren't buying that Bobby burned down the church. They're still looking for you. But I didn't do it. It was Pastor Cook. Wow, I should have bought a lottery ticket this morning. It's clearly my day. But I have what you told Patch to find. I have hard evidence. Really? And the evidence you have will absolutely prove that you didn't burn down that church? Yeah, that's what I thought. Listen, Chica, the people in your town are too bass backwards to care what proof you have about Cook. He's got them wrapped around his little finger. Why do you think they swallowed what he said about you being some devil worshiper, hmm? There's no way I can bust them. But I have account numbers, lists of payments, receipts for weird chemicals, all kinds of stuff gotta be kidding me. Is this really how it ends? Man, I thought my life was Disney. No, they'll believe me. I have an alibi and hard proof. You just don't get it, do you? This isn't a joke. It's not some little fairy tale. You want a piece of advice, Chica? Take your mattress money and get the hell out of that town. They're never going to let you clear your name, so might as well start somewhere new. Take your mother, your whole family, and just go. Know what I'm saying? You'll never find justice here. I'm sorry. Bye. What'd she say? Isn't it obvious? She's not going to help. I'm sorry, Jennifer. What are you going to do? She said I should take my mattress money and leave town with my family. 
Well, obviously, I just turned I just turned myself in and trust the merciful, kind, gloved hands of the law. Well, Tina seemed to think I'm Donald Trump and can just buy myself a ticket out of town. I know someone who can help you start a new life down in California, but it's pretty expensive. Like how much? I'm not sure. I mean, for Jennifer and her brother and mom, probably like 10000 I have almost $3,000 saved up. You can have it, Jennifer. Wow, that's a lot of money. Well, I've been saving to, uh, well, Nelson and I were going to run away together to Portland. I'm sorry, Nelson. I just feel like she needs it. It's okay. We'll save up again. You can have mine too, Jennifer. I have, uh, yep, $2,307. It's yours. Nelson, you're so sexy right now. Uh, sorry? Jennifer, you know you can have what I have saved, but it's only like 200 bucks. Do you think you can come up with the rest? Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry, but there's no way I literally have like $2 in my pocket, and that's it. I mean, I could try adding bank robbery to my list of crimes, but so far I feel like a particularly incompetent criminal. Frankly, it's embarrassing. You're all really, really generous, and I would, of course, pay you all back. But it's no use. I'm blue light bitch, remember? If I had any money, I'd have used it for my brother's procedure long ago. Wait a minute, Jennifer. That's it. Remember? You told me that your dad hid money at the Aradia farm. You were going to surprise your family, remember? Oh my god, how did I forget that? Of course. Angela, my dear, have I ever told you that I believe in true love? Quick, marry me before this feeling passes. And thanks for the reminder. How can I be so stupid? Yes, it's probably more than enough to pay for a new life. Thank you guys, but you don't have to give me your savings. This is awesome, Jennifer. Good luck. Look, there's a swing on that tree. I bet it's under there. This dirt is so hard. How are we going to dig it up? Did you forget a shovel? Oh, sorry. We didn't see you there. We were just leaving. Hello, we're from the Ben Tree Swing Company. We were just making sure everything is in order and it all looks good. Toodaloo. Thanks. Where did you come from? You look familiar. Yes, I saw you on the tube tonight. Didn't think I'd find you in my backyard, though. I think you're mistaken, ma'am. You were just going. Sorry to bother you. Don't be silly, girl. You two are no bother. I just wonder why your dad didn't bring you by earlier, Jennifer. You know my name? I said that everyone knows who I am, but I don't know who they are. Man, being a celebrity sucks. You knew my dad? Well, of course. And I saw Eddie around here just last week. I was wondering why he didn't come by for supper today. I even made him his favorite grilled cheese sandwiches, just like when he was little. You know, my granddaughter Gloria was here yesterday. At least she still remembers to come. I hope they marry someday. What a couple they'd be. But that'll take a miracle, what with her dad's plans. You know, I just can't stand the thought of her with David. Something's just not right with that boy. Are you talking about Gloria Cook? I mean Gloria Aradia. She won't be a Gloria Cook if I have my say. That reminds me. I need to ask Gloria to get me a new Sears catalog. There's something wrong with mine. The year's all cattywampus. Huh. As if. Ma'am, are you okay? Is there anyone here to help you? Well, of course. I have Diana and her boy Eddie and, well, Gloria and Agnes and Dorothy and... Now, well, isn't that odd? I can't remember his name. Where did that husband of mine go? Have you seen him? Sorry, ma'am, but I don't know. What did you say your name is? Angela, I think we may have stepped into a dimension of imagination. It is an area which I call the Aradia Zone. do 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 Ma'am, may we please borrow a shovel? My dad buried something under this tree, and he said I could have it. A shovel? Look at my hands. Do I look like I know where a shovel is? Perish the thought. Oh, keep your shirt on. I'm only joking. There's one right on the other side of this tree. Eddie Dunn used it the other day. Said he was burying a piece of treasure for his daughter. Right under this swing. Said she'd be coming for it someday. Hey, if you see Eddie, you let him know I'll be making grilled cheese again tomorrow, okay? I'm going back inside. It's colder than a witch's tit out here. Well, that was weird. But she's right. There's an old shovel right there. Let's start digging. It's just a cassette tape. Oh, and a note. What does it say? Dear Jenny, David Cook is a bad man, but he'll pay good money for this tape. Be careful. Love, Dad. Well, it's not a bunch of winning lottery numbers. I guess my dad thought Pastor Cook would pay us for this tape. It says we can blackmail Pastor Cook with this tape. God damn it, Dad. I think she's very cash like a normal person. Wait. Do you get it, Jennifer? This must have been what those friends of your dad were talking about, the evidence your dad had against David. We need to hear what's on that tape. Of course, but Patch's car just has an 8-track. We need to find a cassette player. 
This is why I love being friends with the smartest person in town. So, Nancy Drew, do you have any tips on finding a tape player? It just sucks that Tina Lopez doesn't care about any evidence, but hopefully Pastor Cook will pay enough to get my family out of town. I know where there's a tape player. We can use without anyone knowing. The practice room at school. It's still the middle of the night. We can sneak in, listen to it, and then figure out how to get David to pay. Let's go. There's a kerosene heater in the Bible study room. Just start the fire from there and no one will think twice. Do you want to make sure the church is empty first? It'll cost extra. Fuck no, you're already costing me an arm and a leg. The insurance money will be barely worth it. You understand that it's half up front, half after. And if you don't get me the other half, don't you threaten me, Jerry. I own half the cops in this town. I can have you erased and no one will look twice. I wasn't threatening you, sir, but do we have a deal? You'll get paid, don't chicken out, or you'll be in the next fire. Wow, Jennifer, your dad was right. This tape could bring David down hard. What do you think we should do next? <clears throat> Let's call Pastor Cook and tell him that he can have this tape, but it'll cost him $10,000. Maybe we should give it to the local news. You know, the same ones that are right now running a free telethon to help build his next church? I'm wondering if maybe that Tina Lopez woman would be willing to listen to it. Maybe we can still save Ryan's family. It didn't sound like she could do anything because no jury will convict him here. But I bet the insurance company would come after him if they had that tape. That's why he'll pay for it. Look, there's a phone book. Let's give him a call and see if he'll beat us at the graveyard next door. Oh wait, Nelson thought we might need this to keep from them tracing the call. Okay, good luck. Praise the Lord, this is Pastor Cook. Pastor Cook, I have something you want. Praise the Lord, Pastor, I have some wonderful news for you. For a very small donation, your insurance company won't know that you burned down your old church. Listen, you fucking asshole. I have proof that you burned down your last church. If you don't want me to give it to the insurance company, it'll cost you. Isn't Jennifer Kraft, the sweet little wayward lamb? I have been praying and praying and praying for you, and I just want you to know, I forgive you. Oh, it must have been so hard on you losing your daddy, and I'm sure there'll be a wonderful preacher in prison that can help you. I have a tape of you telling someone named Jerry to burn down your church. Meet me at the graveyard at 5 a.m. and bring $10,000. And I just want you to know that I've been praying that uh, you go to hell. Bring 10000 to the graveyard at 5 a.m. And everyone will know about Jerry and the fire. Come to the graveyard at 5 a.m. this morning. If you don't come alone and bring $10,000, then you're going down. Jennifer, I don't have that kind of money. I'm just a very poor, poor preacher in a small, small town. Now, if you're needing a little bit of money just for food or whatnot, I mean, maybe I could scrape together, say, $1,000. Obviously, a little story about a fire is complete nonsense, and no one will ever believe you. But I just don't want to see you starve, little girl. 10,000, 5 a.m., be there or else. You know, that's funny, because you are exactly the kind of person that I think would let someone starve. But not this little girl. Bring the money or it's over. I know about your little crystal meth ring, what you did to my dad, everything. Don't try to lowball me, or I'm taking you down. My, my, what lies the devil's faith will tell. You know, Miss Craft, people don't normally threaten a man of God. It's considered very shameful. But I guess some people just don't know what they do. Hmm. Well, I suppose you'll just have to see if anyone comes to your little graveyard stunt. Just don't forget, little girl. Wherever you think you can hide, God is watching you. How did it go? Why do you look so pale? He's a really scary dude. I wish we didn't have to meet him. But it sounded like he'd probably come. It was nice. We talked about the election, the Discovery Shuttle, and apple pie recipes. You know, the usual. I think he's going to bring the money. He makes me so angry. We just can't let him get away with it. But I think he's going to be there. Great. Hey, while you were talking to him, I had an idea. What if we took one of these microphones and the four-track recorder with us to the graveyard? Look, this cable's got to be like 20 feet long, and it'll be dark, so we won't see it. I'll just hide around a corner or something and press record when you talk to him. Now that will get Tina on our side. Angela, what would I do without you? Promise me we stay best friends, even once I'm in California. I love it. Then if something goes wrong and he shoots me, then at least we'll have a great intro to a death metal song. Holy shit, Angela. If I can get him to admit that what he's done, then maybe. Holy shit. Okay, let's move this stuff over there and get ready. We can't let him see me or any of it. But be careful, Jennifer. This guy is seriously dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Let's go. 
Angela, when have I ever made any bad decisions? I'm like the luckiest person in the world. Come on, we gotta hurry. He's the one that should be scared. We're about to take him down. Well, well, if it isn't Ben's own little Satanist, here to blackmail the only decent man in this town. I'd imagine this tape looks familiar. Did you bring the money? Wow, they say we're a sleepy little town, but a murderous drug lord is the most decent man in it? I have your tape here, but first I want to know, why did you ruin my life, Pastor Cook? I didn't ruin your life, Jennifer. If you want someone to blame, blame your mother. Of course, you're too blind with rage and filth to see it, but it's true, Jennifer. I am a decent man. It wasn't my fault. Um, your mother didn't care for godliness. No, she was always drawn to the dark side, drawn to people like your father. Did she ever tell you what happened that night that Eddie died? I know you were behind his death. Do you really think that's why she didn't want you? You're creepier than Jason and Freddy combined. My father was a good man, unlike you. Ha, huh, you think you know everything, don't you, Jennifer? She was sleeping with that Indian fellow, Bobby. He calls himself Patch now. You think I'm just a bad guy, but what you don't know is that I tried to save their marriage. That's right. I told your dad right to his face that his wife was cheating on him. The whole town was laughing while she cuckolded him. Oh, if you could have seen the look of pain and shock on his face when I told him he was the loser. It was, I'll keep that memory with me forever. Didn't know any of that, did you? And your poor old dad was so cut up about it that he sped off into the woods where he, well, you know, died. I don't believe you, you're a liar. Did you call her a Satanist too? You never got over the fact that she chose him over you, did you? Life is messy. Good people make mistakes and ask for forgiveness. You talk a lot about what my parents did wrong. What do you need to be forgiven for? You don't have to believe it, it's the truth. Ask her someday. But now, I wanna ask you a question. How do I know that you didn't make any copies? You're not just buying the tape. You give me that money and I'll leave Oregon forever. You'll never hear from me again. I would never do that, Pastor Cook. Besides, this one has your handwriting on it. It's an original and no one can say it was sliced together. You don't know, but this is the only copy. You'll just have to take my word for it. You really expect me to believe that? You know, I didn't become the man I am today by taking people's word for things. No, sir. My dad, you know, he used to tell me, you, can trust, you can't trust anyone. He didn't trust my ma, didn't trust the police, didn't even trust me. And he was right to not trust us. We all stole from him, lied about him, told the police all kinds of bad things about him and my sister. They took him away because my ma would keep her damn mouth shut. But the truth was that he was just trying to protect us, toughen us up for the real world. Yeah, he went too far sometimes. One time he went way too far. Hit my sister so hard that she never was the same. She's still just shitting herself in the Oregon State Hospital. But how did it help anything to take him away? The guilt was all too much for Ma. She drank herself to death that year. Yeah, I know. This isn't the Cook family you've heard of. That's because my Uncle Benjamin Cook took me in and raised me as his own. But I never forgot what my dad taught me. You can never trust anyone, not even a pastor. Oh, looky here. Feeling dumb, aren't you? You thought you'd really pull this off. Here, have it. No, seriously, take it. Monopoly money. I should have figured. I didn't realize you had a sense of humor, Pastor Cook. Although I'm a little disappointed. Wouldn't tickets to your church reopening be more worthless? God damn it. Language, Jennifer. Come on, I'm a man of God. Oh, that look on your face. I just love it. The look of a loser. You know what? You look just like your dad when I told him about Mary and Patch. Did you know I broke the news about Eddie's death to Mary? Oh yes, she wore that same look you have now. I just wish I could have told her that it was me that cut the brakes on Eddie's car. Oh, I could pretend that I didn't have a choice. Eddie told me that he had proof that I had hired Jerry to burn down my church, just like Jerry burned down the new one on Saturday. Your dad, always so bold and stupid, said to leave Mary alone or he would turn me in. But the truth is, I didn't need any excuse to kill him. I was ready to put him six feet under from the day Mary chose him over me. And you know what the best thing is? My little crystal meth arrangement with Triple Neck is going to make me the richest goddamn son of a bitch in all of Oregon. And every day I'm going to call her up so she can hear the voice of the man who killed her husband, sent her kid to prison, and is still worshipped by all the insufferable Christian morons in this state. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to tell Chief Armstrong just where that nasty little Satanist he's looking for is hiding. Hey, David. What? Who are... Quick, grab the tape. 
Give me that. Run, Jennifer, run. We're dead. Jennifer, Angela, Mr. Horn, we're running from somebody. Come on, get in here. All right, he's gone. Jennifer, I know you didn't do it, but your mother is worried sick. I'm going to call her right now. Wait, use this gold box we got from a friend. It'll make the call safer. Okay, listen, Jennifer, we want to help you, but you've got to tell us what is going on, and I mean the truth. Here, I'm going to put your mom on speakerphone. Oh boy, Mr. Hone. Horn, you're in for a hell of a story. Before I came to your school from the bank, I checked the account numbers and names from the disk. You're right, Jennifer. They are all tied to David. He's been laundering drug money for years. Okay, the phone's ready. It's set to speaker. It's set to speaker phone, like you asked. Go ahead and call her, Jennifer. Good luck. Be sure she knows that we have tapes for everything. Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Tina Lopez. I told you, Jennifer, that ship has sailed. Whatever proof you have, it doesn't matter. Even if it's airtight, the case will go to jury and he'll get off, scot-free. Oh, Jennifer, why didn't you just do what I suggested? Did you know that if you recorded him with his permission, you committed a crime? And guess what? Oregon law means that no one on the jury will hear a second of those tapes. It doesn't matter if he admitted to killing Jimmy Hoffa. If it's on a tape without his consent, it'll get thrown out, guaranteed. You understand? Everyone in this town thinks Cook is a saint, and you're a Satanist. Without the town on your side, the case won't have a chance, and you'll go to jail. Uh, excuse me? Who is this? Um, I'm Mary Craft, Jennifer's mom. Why are you on this call? I've got to go. No, wait. If the town wasn't on David's side, but knew that Gen Jennifer was telling the truth, then the jury would convict him, right? Did you not hear me? The tapes will not be admitted as evidence. Joey, doesn't the whole town come out to the Halloween Battle of the Bands? Uh-huh, and all the local news outfits, too. Who is speaking now? Listen, Tina, if I can guarantee that the whole town will be at Jen on Jennifer's side, will you bring the case against David? Hello? The whole town? The whole town. Jesus, if you really can pull that off, then I'm in. But it better stick. It will. Who's that? Okay, we need you to be here at 8, 8 p.m. sharp. And we need one favor, a big one. You gotta be kidding me. What is it? We need you to get Ryan out of juvie before eight so he can help us. No, Machis. What are you planning, Mrs. Craft? I'm serious, Tina. Let's take David Cook down, please, for me, for my husband, for Dirty, for Patch, for the Allens, for this whole fucking town, please. All right, I'll put some, pull some strings to get Ryan out, and I'll be there at 8 p.m., Mary. Mary? Yes? I sure fucking hope whatever you have planned works. Me too. Nice, let's hear it for Boys for Boys. Fronted by the Lava Bears. Quarterback, our very own Mark Phillips. Now, next up, what's that? Really? Uh, apparently there's been a little change in tonight's program. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Thanks, can you give a big hand to Principal Wilson? Great, yeah, hello everybody. We have a very, very special surprise. Tonight, there has been a last minute secret mystery band that, I'm not sure that's, oh no, we cleared it. Yeah, go check, all right. Without further ado, I'm happy to give the stage to Hellfire.
It was me that cut the brakes on Eddie's car. Oh, I could pretend that I didn't have a choice. Eddie told me that he had proof that I had hired Jerry to burn down my church, just like Jerry burned the new one on Saturday. Your dad, always so bold and stupid, said to leave Mary alone, or he would turn me in. But the truth is, I didn't need any excuse to kill him. I was ready to put him six feet under from the day Mary chose him over me. And you know what the best thing is? My little crystal meth arrangement with Triple Neck is going to make me the richest goddamn son of a bitch in all of Oregon. And every day I'm going to call her up so she can hear the voice of the man who killed her husband, sent her kid to prison, and is still worshipped by all the insufferable Christian morons in the state. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to tell Chief Armstrong just where that nasty old Satanist he's looking for is hiding. Turn that off. Turn it off. Was that you on the tape, David? Of course not. Give me that mic. Chief Armstrong, please restrain that man. Listen, everybody, you know me. I'm your pastor. I married many of you, baptized your kids, helped you through your problems for years. Let me tell you what just happened. That girl right there, she's the one. She's the Satanist that I warned you about. And when I warned you about her, what did she do? She burned down my church, our church. And now she's trying to ruin me in front of all of you. Don't you remember what I warned you about? How heavy metal musicians manipulate people with their tapes and editing. That's what she's done. She must have taken a bunch of words I said and jumbled them together like a ransom note. Listen, you know me. All of you can vouch for me. But I ask you, can any of you stand up for that cruel-hearted soul there? That arsonist? That slanderer? That Satanist? See? See? Not a one. Jennifer, they all know that. I'll stand up for her. She's a good kid. And you set her up. You know damn well that she's not a Satanist and would never burn down your church. Gloria. What? Oh, you clearly have been drinking. She's a drunk, everyone. She's... I'll stand up for her. You knew Jennifer wasn't a Satanist. You even joked about it this weekend. How dare you? Remember the words, thou shalt honor thy father? Don't quote the Bible to me. You were never a father to me. I want nothing to do with you. David, I'm divorcing you. Gloria, you wouldn't dare. I'll stand up for her. Jennifer's a good person, and I've known her since we were little kids. She was at my party when the fire happened. No, you're mistaken. Your party was stopped by the cops. She must have done it then. I'll stand up for her. Jennifer was an amazing soul, and she went home after the party. She's corrupted the youth of this town. They only think of her as a child, not the witch she's become. I'll stand up for her. I didn't know her as a child, but I can tell you that she's an honest and kind young woman. I'll stand up for her. She knows her Bible verses better than I know phone frequencies. I'll stand up for her. Jennifer's a great kid, and I've seen the evidence, receipts, computer files, audio files. David is guilty of sin. You're just saying that because you're with her whore of a mother, Barry. But did you just call him Mrs. Croft? Uh, I'm just flustered. I'll stand up for her. She's my daughter, and she's always been a good Christian girl. I love her more than life itself. As far as you, David, and as for you, David, Mary, your daughter has sinned against. As for you, Pastor Cook, go to hell. Chief Armstrong, did you say you saw Jennifer at the church with your own two eyes? Dennis, you're on your own, David. Not my problem. What? What? It was you, Jennifer. It was you who did this to me. It was you. What do you have to say for yourself, you spawn of Satan? I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive you, but maybe it's time you started actually praying to God instead of just using him to fool people. Well, in the words of the famous detective John McLean, yippee ki motherfucker. Have fun in prison, loser. Pastor Cook, you know what, David? I'm going to sleep well tonight knowing that you are going to hell. God knows you deserve it, asshole. David Cook, I place you under arrest for the murder of Eddie Kraft, arson fraud, drug trafficking, and a crap load more I don't have time to list. Let's go, punk. You did it, Jennifer. We did it, Mom. Thanks for helping. It's amazing how an arch villain can bring a whole town together like this, isn't it? Thanks for trusting me. I'm sorry I didn't come to you before. Things have been so crazy all weekend long. I just want to go home and eat some frozen burritos. Jennifer, you deserve my trust. Guess who's driving tonight? Here's the keys. Let's go home. Jennifer, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for having this party. Your new house is amazing. Merry Christmas, Jen. Look, I have a present for you. I finally finished mixing the demo tape. And I finished the cover art. See, that's the three of us with flying, with wings flying over bent. All we gotta do is find a label and we'll be seeing Hellfire on MTV. Hey, want a burrito? 
I'll have another one. I mean, they're from Rolaine's. Totally delish. Totally. And uh, Jen, my mom made this ceramic vase for you. My parents are in Salem working on medical legalization, but they wanted you to know they said Merry Christmas. And as always, thanks. Merry Christmas, Jennifer. You look great. And your new home, your mom has such great taste. Hey, Jennifer. Merry Christmas. Look, Pastor Gloria is, Pastor Gloria is wearing the pin you got her. Jennifer, thanks again for leading the Bible study this weekend. You really have a remarkable understanding of it. Yeah, she's a natural. Just one of Jennifer's many amazing qualities. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at the Shashutes Brewery. I've got something special planned. Careful, Jennifer. He's been planning this all week long, and I know it involves a ridiculous number of balloons. You know, one time a boy brought me a balloon. He said he had made himself. He kept that yarn going a spell, but the truth was, it was an old enema bag he swiped off a nurse. I didn't have the heart to tell him I knew, but let's just say I didn't much care to display that around my house. Maggie, you are truly a font of wonderful stories. Thank you, Gloria. You know, it took me a while to get used to this lady pastor thing, but I'm getting it now. Jesus was never one to discriminate, and the whole world would be well off following his example. Oh, I don't want to forget. Merry Christmas, Jennifer. There she is, Special Agent Jennifer. We were just talking about you. All good things, of course. Merry Christmas, Chica. Merry Christmas, Jenny. You and your family have really done an amazing job decorating your new house. She made really good use of the reward money, that's for sure. Still have some left over, right? I'm sure she does. She's a smart cookie, just like her dad. Hey, speaking of which, I wanted to give you something. See that's us back in Nam, and see what he's holding? It's a picture of you. Just thought you might like the way like the way no matter how far the distance or long the time he's always with you merry christmas well merry christmas jenny hell of a house and hell of a party i was just getting acquainted with nikki and nelson right interesting folks they are they were just telling me i should buy some microsoft stores or something stocks microsoft stocks right yeah i'm gonna look into that merry christmas jen you know this house really makes me think what a difference it makes where you live since Nelson and I moved into the apartment together, I honestly don't even miss Portland. I don't know how, but this weird little town has grown on me. Hey, Jen. Um, Nikki and I, you know, we made some investments, and uh, they did well. So we were talking, and uh, we bought you a computer. We know you can afford one, now, afford one now, but Nelson wanted to make sure it... It's a 386 with an 80 megabyte hard drive and an SVGA monitor. It even has a 9600 baud modem so you can, you know, dial into Nan's freaky wares board where Sysops there. He's saying it's a good one and that you should, like, call us with it. Don't worry. We'll help you. Merry Christmas. Oh my God, it's you. Look at you. You're so beautiful, like a radiant Christmas spirit. Merry, merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jennifer. Hey, have you seen my new boyfriend around here? Have you checked his crib? He's one year younger, Julie. I'm just teasing. Tom is such a nice guy. Seriously, like, nice catch, Kelly. Thanks. Is it enough to make you want to date, Julie? How would I tie myself down with a guy? I mean, I already feel like I'm in a long-distance relationship with Alpha One. That's the alien she thinks she met through the comments or something. Hey, don't knock it until you spock it. Yeah, see what I did there? You are such a clown. I love you. Hey Jennifer, you look happy. You know, I'm pretty sure it's against the rules to have a Christmas party that's not awkward, but I swear your friends seem to be having a great time. This year things really turned out to be a Christmas miracle, didn't they? Between the house, Jesse getting healthy, and you being able to go to college, everything is looking better. Hey, did you know that the brownies Ryan brought have a not for kids sign on them? They have some kind of flavor I just can't place. It's not vanilla, maybe rosemary, sage? I have my suspicions, but they're like really tasty. I mean like really, really. Yeah, I think we've maybe had one too many of those because now I'm craving something salty. Hmm, need to find like a burrito or something. Yes, this is why we're engaged, Joey. We are so on the same wavelength, the burrito wavelength. Such a delicious wavelength. Hey, Jennifer, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jen, you look amazing and you're wearing your favorite shirt, I love it. Hey, Angela, have you decided what you're gonna study at U of O? I think maybe journalism. I feel like the world could use better news, you know? Totally, and better cartoons too. You know, I'm glad you got some reward money too, because like Jenny would be really sad if you didn't go with her to Eugene. Well, like I've always told her, we're best friends forever. Jesse, how's it going with the chemotherapy? You know, it's a little harsh, but it seems to be working. They say that the cancer is looking like it's gone. That's wonderful, Jesse. Wow, truly awesome. 
Thanks, and by the way, I decide that my calling is to eat snacks, watch cartoons, and draw. Hmm, are you sure that's a good idea? Why wouldn't it be? Well, I've never known anyone who likes snack foods, cartoons, and drawing more than you. What could they really teach you? Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, you are going to college after all. Going to be, and with my best friend. Yep, this girl right here. You saved your family, your friends, and the whole town. I love you, Jennifer. You rock. You win. Congratulations. Thanks for watching me play, guys. I hope that it was enjoyable. My not great reading, but um, I had fun doing it. So see you next time. Bye for now.